Hello everyone! Welcome back to another Stitches and Scribbles tutorial. Today we are changing it up a little bit with a project I've never actually done before, but I had a friend um, request to have me make one of these for her dog. So today we're making a very simple dog sweater. This one is going to be very much puppy sized because of how small my friend's dog is. She's a little tiny um, I'm actually not sure what breed of dog she is, but kind of has the shape of a dachshund or like a wire hair dachshund. Um, so this project that I am making as the example will be very, very small, but you can easily size up just by changing the number of stitches. The stitch pattern we're working with today is a one by one rib stitch, which you can see in the first panel that I've already created. This panel is going to be the back panel of the sweater that I am making and I cast on 42 stitches for this panel. The second panel or the inner panel is going to be a lot smaller which is why that's the one I'm using in the tutorial. But this gives you the advantage of already seeing how the stitch pattern works up and seeing how stretchy it is. So I would recommend taking measurements of the dog that you are making this for and um, adjusting your stitch count accordingly as long as it's an even number of stitches the pattern will still work. I am using the um, Loops and Threads Impeccable yarn in the color Pixie Bloom Variegated. I did purchase two of these but I think for the size dog that I am making this project for I will actually only need one which is kind of exciting because um, that means I have an extra skein of yarn I can use for something else. I'm going to start my second panel by casting on 18 stitches and again you can adjust the number of stitches for the size of the dog that you're making it for. So I did 42 for my bigger panel that goes across the dog's back. This is the one that's going to go on their stomach so it's a lot smaller. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and I think I'm actually going to stop there instead of doing the full eighteen because I'm seeing how long this will turn out. For the stitch pattern itself, you just need to know how to do knit stitches and purl stitches. So the pattern we're going to work with is knit one, move your yarn, and then purl one. And we're going to repeat that pattern throughout. So knit one, and purl one, knit one, purl one, Knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one purl one, and last pair, knit one, and purl one. That's it for the stitch pattern. You're going to continue this until you reach your desired length for the panel. The inner panel is usually a lot smaller than the outer panel. I am also, again, making this for a dog that kind of has the dachshund shape, so a really long body, but we still want the underside to be fairly short. So I will probably go until my inner panel is about half the length of my outer panel to make this dog sweater. So you can knit yours to your desired length and then come back to this tutorial to see how to sew the two panels together. All right, so I have finished my inner panel and I'm going to show you how to sew up the sides. So when you're sewing this up, you want to leave a gap in the middle wide enough for the dog's leg to fit through. And I would recommend going 
on the bigger side rather than the smaller side for this part um, because you don't want it to be too tight while the rest of the panels stretch this way. They don't stretch very much this way, meaning that that's going to be a pretty um, tight fit if it's too small. So all I'm doing to sew this up is using a yarn needle and I am using the mattress stitch to sew this up. And the nice thing about using um, a kind of striped yarn for this is that it's going to be really easy to make sure that the hole matches up when you get to that point. So I just have the front panel lined up with the back panel where I want it and I'm going in one way and back the other way. I'll show that again because I wasn't actually on camera for that. So in one way and back the other way. If you imagine your stitches kind of looking like rungs of a ladder, that's what we're going for when we sew this up. I'm just going to keep going back and forth. And I'm going to make my final stitch go through so that it ends on the inside on the bottom panel before the hole. So now I'm actually just going to do a couple stitches kind of woven through to hide that string and that way I don't have to cut and start sewing again and then just continue that mattress stitch on the other side of the leg hole. And when you reach the edge, you're just going to knot it and then you're ready to weave in ends. I'm going to do that off camera and then show you an optional final step. All right, here's our last optional step once you have the little sweater sewn up. If you don't know how to crochet, again, this is totally optional and you don't need to, but if you do, you can add um, a cute little trim to the back end of the sweater. So because that's the cast off row, um, it has a nice even set of stitches for you to work into. So I'm kind of improvising here but I'm going to start with a single crochet and do a cluster of three double crochets one stitch away. So I skipped one and now I'm going to do a cluster of three. I'm going to skip one stitch and do a single crochet in the next one. So hopefully this is going to give me kind of petal shapes on that edge. So I'm going to skip one and do three double crochets in the next one. Skip a stitch and do a single crochet. not doing quite what I want it to so I'm actually going to go back and instead of a single crochet I'm going to start with a slip stitch and I'm going to skip two and then do my double crochets. So slip stitch, skip two, three double crochets in the same stitch and skip two and do a slip stitch. So one, two, slip stitch there. That should give me a more distinct petal shape. If 
if you are just a knitter or just a crocheter and want to learn the other one, I would say um, that this is a pretty good benefit because doing trim and crochet is a lot easier than doing trim in knit, at least in my opinion, and I definitely like to have projects where I combine the two. Um, doing crochet edging on things like sweaters with a neck hole is also um, easier, especially if you don't know how to pick up stitches with knit. And I'm going to end it on that last stitch, pull it through, and weave in those final two ends. So there you have a simple dog sweater with kind of a ruffle wave edge. And this probably total took me less than three hours, so it's an easy afternoon project great gift for somebody who um, has a dog in their life. Um, again, if you are making this for a bigger dog, it's obviously going to take longer, take more yardage. But for little dogs, I have probably a third of the skein left, and I started with 187 yards. So that's pretty good if you're looking for a little quick project. I guess this would fit a cat too, but uh, as a cat owner, I personally don't recommend attempting to put clothes on cats because I have always had cats where that uh, wouldn't work well at all. Um, so with cats, try at your own risk and dogs too, I guess. But I hope you had fun with this tutorial and make something with it. Um, I'd love to see pictures. You can always um, tag me in things on Instagram. Um, my Instagram username is the same as YouTube, except I have a dot between the words. So it's stitches dot and dot scribbles um, because stitches and scribbles by itself was already taken. So yeah, you can tag me in pictures there. You can also follow me on TikTok for quicker tutorials and things. And I hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.